In the previous video, you explored the atomic structure of nonmetals. Unlike metals, where the electrons were free to move around between the atomic cores, nonmetals have electrons that are just locked into bonds between atoms. And we call those bonds covalent bonds. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the properties that those kinds of bonds cause nonmetals to have. What we're going to do is take a look at some different examples of characteristics of nonmetals and relate it back to those covalent bonds that hold nonmetals together. First off, let's take a look at the element carbon, which is commonly found in charcoal. Carbon is an interesting nonmetal because it has four electrons around the outside in its outer shell. Now, considering that it takes eight to be stable, Four electrons on the outside is pretty far away from having a full outer shell. Yet still, carbon basically acts like a nonmetal, so it's classified as a nonmetal. Those four electrons around the outside cause carbon to behave in interesting ways. It causes carbon atoms to bond together with covalent bonds to other carbon atoms. Now, you've seen that before. Iodine bonded to other iodine atoms that way. Nitrogen bonded to other nitrogen atoms that way. But the thing that makes carbon unique is notice that there's one electron still around every single side of the carbon atoms except where there's the bond in between. That allows more carbon atoms to continue to plug in to each side, forming a network of bonds of carbon atoms all bonded together. Now you'll notice that when carbon atoms bond together, randomly every now and again, there's going to be a double bond where we have two pairs of electrons shared. It's not going to make an even crystalline shape like we're used to seeing in crystals. We call this type of substance that doesn't make a regular pattern, but still the atoms make a network, we call this an amorphous substance. Amorphous meaning it doesn't have a regular shape. Also, it's important to note that this is called a covalent network solid. It forms covalent bonds that usually cause atoms to form individual molecules, except these bonds go in all directions. What would happen if you were to pound on carbon with a hammer. Let's take a look at what would happen to the structure if you hit it with a hammer. Now remember, with a metal, the electrons would just rearrange themselves and the atoms could just slide into a new position and it would still be a single, uniform, solid material. Look what happens when you pound carbon with a hammer. It breaks the crystal or the structure apart into smaller pieces. Those electrons are locked into bonds between atoms. They're not just free to slide around wherever like they were in a metal. And because those electrons are locked into place, when you break some of those bonds apart by smashing it, a lot of those bonds are going to remain and try to hold the structure together. So when you pound carbon, you actually break apart the crystalline structure of it into smaller pieces to make a powder. The same happens with other substances as well. I'm going to show you iodine again, which, remember, had seven electrons in its outer level. And it, because it has seven and wants to have eight, it's going to share with another iodine atom nearby to make this structure. Now, when we look at how these iodine atoms act, every once in a while, the electrons that are a part of the atom are all going to move closer to one side than the other side. And remember what this causes? Other molecules nearby are going to follow suit because that negative charge repels all the electrons away and the positive charge attracts other electrons and other molecules to it. So it's going to end up forming this weakly bonded structure. Iodine's an interesting substance because it's a solid, but it very easily changes to a gas because it's not held together all that well with this type of bond. What would happen if we hit iodine with a hammer? The exact same thing. This structure isn't very strong, so the bonds between the atoms that hold the iodine molecules together stay the same, but those weaker bonds holding the whole thing together as a solid will easily break and shatter. We say that nonmetals are brittle. They shatter to a powder when pounded. 
That's as opposed to being malleable like a metal, which means that you can pound it into a flat sheet. You can't do that with a nonmetal. The bonds with the electrons locked in place don't allow that. What are some other properties of nonmetals? Well, what would happen if we took a battery and tried to run an electric current through a nonmetal? Those electrons are locked into place in the bonds between the atoms. So if we tried to run an electric current through it, it would be very difficult to make the electrons move. It takes an extremely high voltage. They are not good conductors of heat or electricity. I circled all of those locked in bonds for you. And even those electrons around the outside are stuck in place because of the positively charged cores. So what else characterizes the nonmetals? Well, let's consider what would happen if you shined a light on a nonmetal. Now, this substance in this picture is another halogen like iodine. This is bromine, which is a reddish brown liquid that fumes off this brownish reddish gas. In metals, when we shone a light on them, the electrons are free to go up and then fall back down very easily because they were free to move around so much. With nonmetals, because the electrons are much more locked into place, they can't just move up freely. However, they can gain certain amounts of energy that they're allowed to by their structure. And what that happens is they will absorb some colors of light characteristic for their structure, but reflect others. And with bromine, they'll absorb colors of light except for red, which they reflect back out. And that's why you see that deep red color. Nonmetals usually have a variety of colors. They also tend to be dull because they're a rougher surface than metals because they crumble and are brittle. But there's another characteristic of light and nonmetal that you need to know. What would happen if you shone light through a substance like oxygen gas? Because those electrons are so locked in, sometimes they don't absorb really any light that passes through them. So oxygen just allows all light to pass right through it, and to us it appears transparent. All right, one more characteristic property of nonmetals that you need to know. And that is that nonmetals tend to have very low densities and melting points. I want you to consider that for a moment. Here's a picture of the gas helium. Now, remember I said earlier that atoms mostly want eight electrons in their outer shell. There are some lighter atoms that are an exception to the octet rule, like helium, which only needs two to have a full outer shell. These atoms are electrically neutral and they have a full outer shell, so they have no reason to want to combine and bond and stick together with other atoms. And that's why helium has such a low density. The atoms just spread out as far as they want. They're not really attracted to each other at all. The same is true for elements that are made up of multiple atoms bonded together, like oxygen, which is two oxygen atoms bonded together. They're sharing electrons, and because they're sharing electrons, they both have eight around the outside. There's no real reason for them to want to attract to other molecules nearby. So they just do their own thing. They stay away from each other, and therefore oxygen stays a gas. It has a very low melting and boiling point, and it doesn't have a very high density at all. Gases don't have high densities. Lastly, what if we consider a substance that does form a solid? Remember, I talked about those substances with those electrons that tend to move to one side and then weakly attract other molecules nearby? Even when that happens, the bonds between the molecules are so weak, like these phosphorus molecules, that they don't pull tightly together like metals did with the sea of electrons pulling everything together. These just aren't attracted to each other. So they stay fairly spread out. They end up having a low density. And it doesn't take much energy at all to cause them to spread away from each other and start sliding past each other as a liquid and then to evaporate them to a gas. So these are the properties of nonmetals caused by those electrons being locked up inside molecules or tightly around the outside of the atoms.